I like getting stuff done, and this is nothing new for those of you who have seen more than a few videos of mine. I simply feel dissatisfied when I'm not trying my hardest to get stuff done that I care about, and not doing it efficiently so that I can do more stuff to make money, but also improve myself and maintain the stuff that I have. I'm not always good at what I'm doing. I also feel, oh God. And I often fall behind, but days that I go to sleep with energy left, be it mental or physical, I drift off a little bit disappointed. But it's extremely rare that this is how my day ends, because more often than not, my disappointment comes from running out of energy before I finished what I wanted. So I got an exoskeleton that adds one horsepower to my legs. The same way we've been waiting lifetimes for a robot that you can actually buy right now, or of course flying cars that you can actually buy right now. But let's go back to 1999. Two independent walking assist technologies have been developed. Do you remember this? I don't. I, I wasn't born yet, but Honda made an exoskeleton so their factory workers could build cars faster, presumably with no additional compensation, but it doesn't matter because they were never made. Oh. Oh, it was. It, it was made, it's made now. Here it is. <laughs> it's not made by Honda, but I got one that isn't expected to ship in five to 50 years, but in 48 hours. This is the Hypershell X Pro. So I've worn it for four days now, and it's designed literally for people like myself. It's a weirdly simple device. I click it to my waist, click it to each leg, power it on, and I now have a lithium ion battery powering two motors. They give me 800 watts of power for up to around 10 miles of range, depending on what I'm doing. And it recognizes 10 motions, like walking, going up or down stairs, and running with a maximum speed assistance of 12 miles per hour. Okay, now here's where I got most excited. Hypershell claims to reduce physical exertion by 30%. And imagine if I could do one third more work or cover one third more ground or burn one third fewer calories because I burn too many calories when I'm trying to get stuff done. So naturally, I started running through my to-do list around the yard today. It has three primary modes, eco for a little bit of juice, hyper for maximum output, and transparent, which disables the motors and just lets me walk normally. Okay, but how does it actually feel? It looks kind of almost pretty normal, I think, on camera. You can't really tell what it's doing. Well, at first, I was extremely thrown off by the experience because finding the sweet spot and getting comfortable with it didn't come naturally. Oh, oh, we're locked in. Oh, it stood me up straight. What the? <laughs> Press and hold for two seconds. To switch to hyper mode. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> Does this look natural? <laughs> There's four power levels under eco and hyper. Double click to increase, triple click to decrease. Explore freely. Experience different modes. Okay. Whoa, I put it on max. Oh, oh my god. Okay, it's on absolute max power. I'm gonna slightly lift my leg. I'm actually being dominated by this device right now. This is so bizarre. Uh, I saw online someone called it the e-bike of walking. It, okay, I'm, 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 <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's like I'm really angry. I have to look angry. I think that's more so for like climbing and running. Let me put it into eco. All right, just regular eco mode, lowest setting. Okay, very, very gradual in eco mode. We're just chilling. Okay, whoa, I can like, I'm like not exerting any effort to run. I feel like I was made in the Boston Dynamics lab. I wish they made an arm one so I could just like Congratulations, start your adventure. I like how it engages. I'm not engaging. Like, okay, I'm gonna try and fall. 
Okay, I'm gonna try and walk and then fall in front of the TV. Okay, well, it, it let me fall. <laughs> There's also a reverse setting. Let me try that real quick. Okay, experimental fitness. It's at 100% fitness. Oh, fitness resistance. Oh. So now it's doing the opposite. It's using its power to push against me. It feels exactly like trudging through water. That's weird. Oh, okay, so there's automatic motion recognition. But I can all... <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take it off. Oh! Okay, now it feels really weird to have my legs free. Yeah, I actually feel kind of heavy now. Fat fuck go herpy, they call them. I actually feel like I just gained 30 pounds. It works, what can I say, it works. It actually does what it's advertised to do. That was earlier this week and I've since realized it requires a lot less energy than I was thinking. This is probably largely because I'm not large. I almost never use hyper mode and I found that even in eco, it's around 30 to 40% that I find the most benefits from it. The sensation is similar to when you're super tired, like walking upstairs. So you use your hands to like push your legs down, which I think other, I don't know, maybe this, do other people do that? I don't know. But this robot does that for you. It also does the opposite motion, pulling my legs upwards and forwards when I complete a movement. Taking a casual stroll with Hypershell and feeling like I'm being carried is not what this exoskeleton does. Instead, I'd call it the physical equivalent to like a gym buddy motivating you to push a little harder and do one more rep. But he's there to grab the bar from you in case you cannot complete it. Basically, the hyper shell will recognize what I'm doing and then repeat that motion alongside me at a consistent pace. So if I start to walk, hyper shell keeps the two motors going one step after another and it keeps my pace for me. It adapts to any speed I'm going, but it seems to like to keep that pace throughout usage. If you've ever ridden an electric bike, it's very similar, but on my legs for walking instead of the motor of a bicycle. Like when you use pedal assist, you pedal the bike normally, and then once you're going, the bike kicks its motor in to add a little bit of juice and help you turn the wheels. Then when you stop pedaling, the bike notices about a half second later and stops applying energy. That's how Hypershell is, it's just got a lot less of a delay. The AI motion engine takes input from over a dozen sensors integrated into the exoskeleton, like gyroscopes, accelerometers, and a barometer to predict your next step and modify how much power assist the motors give. Over time, it adapts to your stride signature so it gets better at predicting your next step, making the exoskeleton feel smooth and natural to wear. And yes, that was a direct quote from Hypershell. You start doing something, Hypershell kicks in. You stop doing something, Hypershell stops. However, because it assumes you want to take one step after another, it'll kind of push you to do just one more motion, even if you've already stopped. And so if you ignore this push and just stop, it also stops. But this is where I realized Hypershell is as mentally supportive as it is physically. When there's a motor suggesting your leg take another step, I'm, I just take another step, I just keep going. And so in my use case so far, instead of being less tired at the end of a hike or a task or a walk, I've continued exerting a regular amount of energy, but I just do everything quicker and for longer amounts of time. When I normally might start to slow my pace, Hypershell picks up my slack and keeps me going. Okay, let's get into some specific use cases, like carrying things, no matter how light or heavy. This is where I really noticed that it offsets weight and it claims to offset I think up to 66 pounds. So this load is removed from my legs and Hypershell supports it with me. And then when I wanna do something a bit more precarious, like actually scaling the ladder, I don't want the motors to just kick in. So I tap the button once, which sets it to transparent mode. It's essentially in standby, awaiting my next request. And then when I'm done, I tap it again and it's back to assisting me. I hiked something like five miles and then the day after, I used it outside without charging it for an additional two hours before the first battery finally died. My initial assumption was the device would either not last that long or be too heavy from a big enough battery to apply all that power. But I would say they actually found the right balance of weight 
and range. I swapped it for the second battery and kept going. I love virtual reality, but I have to take breaks relatively often because my face starts to kind of hurt or I get a little bit too hot or sometimes nauseous because you know, all the motion. So yeah, obviously Hypershell doesn't cause VR nausea and the materials are soft enough that I don't actually find it uncomfortable even after running through a full battery. However, it does get extremely sweaty under the leg straps. While the material itself is pretty breathable, it sticks my pants to my legs, which aren't as breathable, and it felt kind of like pulling a mouse off a glue trap as I peeled pants from my thighs. And it's after I take the hypershell off that I really realize how much it was contributing. I suddenly have to really apply myself to every step after my body suddenly loses its external power source. And unfortunately, the one place I have to take it off is in the car. While I was able to mount and dismount my lawnmower and ride it pretty normally, it just isn't compatible with getting in the driver's seat of a car. The passenger seat's a little easier because there's no steering wheel, but even then, the battery and rear components stick out too much to actually sit back regularly. My hope was to do an Amazon shift in it, but that's a use case I don't think this would work with. The good news is in times that I wasn't wearing it, it just folds and fits in a regular backpack, so that's pretty cool actually. Speaking of, wearing a backpack with some gear in it is probably my favorite use case so far. The benefit it provides while I'm carrying like external weight is much more substantial compared to just wearing the hypershell and seeing if it offsets like my personal body weight. It's not as noticeable compared to when I add a backpack or something in my arms. By this point, you have an opinion on this device. Whether you've seen it before or this is your first time, I want to know what you're thinking so far. Maybe how it makes me look disabled or how the original buyers of Google Glass looked walking around town. <laughs> but at least I can walk into a bathroom without people assuming I'm shooting creep shots. And yes, I can pee without taking the hypershell off. The only thing I dislike about the styling is the majority of the materials are reflective which I guess is fine because it makes it more safe or whatever, like... I, the thing is, I wear all black for a reason, so I wish that they had a stealth option or something where all the components were black and not a robotic high-vis vest. There is a stealth setting in the app that turns the LEDs off, but it's too reflective. The app is actually really good and optional to use. It reminds me of the One Wheel app, which is like, okay, you can turn the One Wheel and use it without ever using the app, or you can go into the app and do a lot of extra customization and keep track of the stats and everything. You get the mileage, the estimated remaining range, the battery, and what motion it's currently detecting that you're doing. You can also manually set it to a motion. Like if you're on a bike, you can set it to bike mode, but I don't really see a reason to use that because it seems to always pick up what you're doing. And at the end of the day, it really does bring me the same benefits I find from e-bikes. I can comfortably go farther and do more with less effort with a very cool piece of technology. Based on my use cases so far, I'd say it's best for people who carry weight on a regular basis, like a heavy backpack with a lot of gear, or those of you in environments where the heat or cold or terrain is what tends to limit you like it does with me. Like basically I overheat super easily and so anything over like 70 degrees and I'm just dying, but I was substantially less sweaty with the hypershell on. I'm just excited that regular consumers are getting more access to more tech that we've been like kind of anticipating and seeing like previews of people designing forever. I also have to run back to get all these shots, but I'm not out of breath. That's cool. So if you're the type to jump on products that I enjoy like Oculus Quest or Meta Ray-Bans or One Wheels or Teslas even, I suspect you'll appreciate Hypershell's Pro X and you'd be able to find all sorts of use cases that I have yet to figure out. These are all my just own actual thoughts on the Hypershell, but they asked me to add a few additional notes. That being, if your reaction is, is this cheating? Like, I don't really need it. But imagine you're traveling and you're too exhausted to visit that one place you truly wanted to see. Or you're hiking and your legs give out before you reach the flipping summit. An exoskeleton doesn't replace your effort, it just saves your energy so you can use it where it matters most to reach the view you came for, or go farther than fatigue would normally allow. What if your next peak wasn't a question of if, but just part of the plan? With Hypershell, distance no longer limits your curiosity, it fuels it. How dramatic. <laughs> no, I think it's cool though. 
Will I use it every day? No, but I already have other ideas where I'm like, oh, I should throw the hyper shell on for this. And I've been playing around with it every day. And it's been a very interesting experience. So while it's not for everyone, it's possible you'll want to check it out. So I linked it in the description and I'm sure you'll see it pop up in future videos. Motor of the stride management assist is behind one's lower back. It provides the appropriate amount of assist to the thigh during a step forward and when the rear leg pushes off the ground. Within a predetermined target range setting, enabling it to adjust the length of the stride and walking rhythm. The positive impact was clearly evident.